Brother Mutant here. We are starting another Let's Play of the Darkest Dungeon this time. A fantastic dungeon crawler game. Ruin has come to our family. You remember our venerable house? Opulent and imperial, gazing proudly from its stoic perch above the moor. I lived all my years in that ancient rumor-shadowed manner, fattened by decadence and luxury. And yet I began to tire of conventional extravagance. Singular unsettling tales suggested the mansion itself was a gateway to some fabulous and unnameable power. With relic and ritual, I bent every effort towards the excavation and recovery of those long secrets, exhausting what remained of our family fortune on swarthy workmen and sturdy shovels. At last, in the soft crags beneath the lowest foundations, we unearthed that damnable portal and to delude him. step unsettled the ancient earth, but we were in a realm of death and madness. In the end, I alone fled laughing and wailing through those blackened arcades of antiquity, until consciousness failed me. You remember our venerable house, opulent and in it is a festering abomination. I beg you, return home. Of the darkest dungeon. That was brutal. I love that intro. Sorry I was so quiet for that part. Oh, so we're going to do a let's play of this game here. We actually erased all our old game so that we can start fresh. I've never actually beat the Darkest Dungeon, so you should know that up front. There's plenty out there of people that have uh, successfully beat it, have tutorials on how to beat it. Uh, I'm actually going to go without knowing much more than what I already know and try to make our own way to the Darkest Dungeon and beat it. Um, you gotta be quiet for this next part. You will arrive along the old road. It winds with a troubling, serpent-like suggestion through the corrupted countryside. Leading only, I fear, to ever more tenebrous places. There is a sickness in the ancient, pitted cobbles of the old road. And on its writhing path, you will face viciousness, violence, and perhaps other damnably transcendent terrors. So steal yourself, and remember there can be no bravery without madness. The old road will take you to hell, but in that gaping abyss, we will find our redemption. I believe him. How about you guys? You believe him? He, he sounds trustworthy. Okay, so this is actually the tutorial, so we're actually going to do two parts here. We're going to do a tutorial, and then we're going to do the very first mission. We'll do those as quick as I can, um, just so we can get jumping into the game. And I'll explain things as we're going through the first five, ten missions or so, just so you guys get an understanding of what things do, how they work. This is a fantastic game. I've played it many times before, watched lots and lots of plays through. And the one that I seem to come back to every time, and he's done like hundreds, 200 plus episodes uh, is Bear Taffy, and not to shout out to someone who's clearly better than I am, but he really has a lot of fun doing this, and it's one of the reasons I actually decided to do my own Let's Play. Um, this is our hamlet. This is where we're going to be upgrading steadily. It looks like crap compared to this. Um, it's loading the screen right now. This will be where the darkest dungeon is at, below basically your home. That perched high above the moor. We're going to uh, have two characters that we always start with. 
we start with these two guys here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna explain that. So we have Renault, who is your crusader. He's mostly like a tank because of his high hit points. Uh, this is Dismas, and he is your other character you always start with, and he's basically your damage dealer. He does melee damage, he does range damage, he does bleeds, and we'll see those as we start to fight things. This is our torch, this is where our characters are currently at. This is our torch light, it's at 100% right now. Click on Brigands the... have run up these lanes. Keep to the side path. The hamlet is just ahead. It's letting you know that you can actually use keys to actually control what's done here. So A and D move backwards and forwards. Forwards is the only way you can move without it being a problem. If you move backwards, it, they don't for whatever reason turn around. They kind of walk backwards and they step on each other's toes and stress out. You'll see that later. Uh, but you can use the mouse the cursor here to move yourself forward. Just press left. Dispatch this thug in brutal fashion that all may hear of your arrival. Okay. So this is an easy fight just to get you warmed up. Um, notice that we've surprised him. What that means is he will actually get his turn indicated by this hash mark after all of our characters get to go first. That will happen anytime you surprise the bad guys. If we get surprised, we get party shuffled. Uh, and then everything plays out like normal. Um, you'll see that my, my powers or my abilities are highlighted down below here. There's two of them in particular that are highlighted. The other two are grayed out. The ones that are grayed out are ones that cannot target him because of the position he's in. He's in position one, two, three, four of the bad guys. These ones only hit positions two, three, or four. Same with this one here. This one hits position one, two, and three. So it's a spreading of damage, so obviously it doesn't do as much damage. This one here is open vein. Hits position one or two, you get to pick. And it does pretty decent damage, and it also has a chance to bleed them. Since he's a human, as you can see down here, it's a pretty good chance that he'll bleed. If it hits, I'll show you what that means. Oh, he resisted both of them. Okay, so now it's my uh, Crusader's turn. Now he can do straight up damage and probably kill him if he hits. Uh, he can stun him. Most of his attacks are going to be useful in position 1 and 2, which you see below the name of them. The yellow dots, position 1 and 2 is misleading. See, it's, you're used to reading left to right, so position 4, 3, 2, and 1 is what you're seeing there. 4 and 3 are grayed out. The yellow dots are position 2 and 1. And of course, if you see red dots, that's showing you what he can attack on the other side of the map. But position 1, 2, 3, and 4 on this side. So obviously he's better for hitting things up front than he is stuff in the back. At least with the moves we have right now. Uh, we have combo moves that can hit position 1 and 2, but there's no one there. So there's no point in diluting our damage out. We can stun him. We have a 75% chance of stunning him because we have a 100% stun base versus his 25% stun resistance, which you see down here. So you subtract one from the other and you get 75%. So we got better than a coin toss to stun this guy. Let's try it. Alright, that means he definitely loses his first turn. Now, everything progresses as normal and it's based on speed for all the characters. However, it's based on speed and a, a random number that's rolled for each turn, kind of like uh, initiative, if you think of it that way. So, uh, just because he has a higher speed than Renal doesn't mean he's technically going to go first. And likewise, you know, he could have a speed that is lower than both these guys, but still roll high enough that he gets to go first. So don't just assume that because you have the higher speed, you know your party order of attacks. It doesn't work that way. Um, but again, we can finish this guy off. But before we do that, I want to just show you something here. This little up arrow mark is a buff. If you hover over it with your cursor, you can actually see it's a plus 40% stun resist for one round. The reason for that is because we just stunned him, he shook off the stun, and when he shakes off the stun, they give the, the game gives everybody a stun resistance buff for a short turn. The reason for that is, is that way you can't just stun lock the same guy over and over and over again and just kind of cheese it. Uh, there are ways to multiple stun the same guy more than once, but after the second time, I'd say you're pretty much pushing your luck. As the enemy crumbles. Good work, Dismas. Got a little money for that. And of course, we have food here. We took damage. We could use the food to heal ourselves. Okay. This is our curio interactive objects in the map. They can be in the rooms as well as outside of the rooms in the hallways. You click on it, left click on it, and you see this thing pop up telling you what it is. If you can drag something here, 
sometimes you can interact with it in a way that allows you to unlock it safely. Like you drag keys to a lock box. If you don't and you just click this, the, the box might be trapped and could poison you or do damage. Um, so keys may open it safely or get you more loot. You see what I mean? As we go through. This one's relatively safe. We just click it. Leave Lots nothing unchecked. There is much to be found in forgotten places. Notice that we are losing light. The more light we lose, some of the worst things happen to us. We can increase our stress. Uh, our scouting and monster surprise chance goes down. And if we get really low, their crit chance gets higher, but so is ours. Um, kind of like a bush. Send these vermin a message. The rightful owner has returned, and their kind is no longer welcome. Yeah, get out of my house. Um, one of the things that happens as the light gets lower is we'll also get better loot chances. So it's kind of a risk reward thing. A lot of people will do uh, torchless runs specifically so they can capitalize on that money. These guys are weak and we certainly wouldn't want to do that. But there is the ability to snuff the light, which if you hover over you can actually... It's not going to let me do it. Um, I mean, you can't do it in battle. Uh, but there's like a shift click, a shift left click, and control or something like that. And it'll douse it a little bit or all the way. Let's see. So we have two guys to shoot. Because he's so big, he's actually technically in position one and two, which is why his bar is as weird looking as it is. So there's position one, two, three, and four. No one in four, obviously. Uh, all my moves that are valid, because I can hit anybody with... Uh, these shots. Uh, this one here is the only one that can hit it is position 1 and 2, which is why the red dots right below where my cursor is, you see down here. Uh, but he is position 1 and 2, so it doesn't matter. I can basically just target him and bleed him. Now, he has a lot of health because he's so big. And he's particularly tough. This guy is particularly annoying because he does a lot of AoE damage, much like our grape shot does. But I really don't have a move that's going to take him out unless I get lucky and crit. And it can't happen. Uh, but it would take probably two, maybe three turns to kill this guy off with just Dismas. Renal, he can't even swing at this guy because he's can only really target position one and two with his powers right now. So this guy is pretty much our target. So let's bleed him. There we go. Okay, well, good. We're getting our turn first because they're surprised. Uh, notice that two things happen when we did our uh, vein strike there. So we debuffed his bleed resistance. You'll notice right down below here his bleed resistance is now zero where a moment ago it was 20 percent so now he has no resistance to bleed attacks if we hit it it should bleed him every time i don't know if that's a guarantee i, I, I don't like to say 100 percent is guaranteed for anything i think you can even have a, a chance of it missing um, but you see the bleed this damage over time this red dot or tear um, it's two damage per round for three rounds so he'll take six more damage before that bleed wears off unless he heals and bandages it up and you get the idea. Uh, there's another dot that's similar to this, but they call it Blight, and it's a green teardrop. So we don't have a character that can do that, but that's another, the only other damage over time move that we actually have in this game. Um, I could hit him. I could stun him. He has 50% stun resistance, as you'll see down here, uh, and I have 100% base stun chance, so it's a 50-50 chance then for it to work or not work, and of course I still have to hit him to even get that chance. But it's a pretty good accurate, like 90% chance to hit this guy. Uh, if it stuns him, that would be nice, and it would give us a chance to work that bleed a little longer. Uh, if I just straight up want to do damage, I could do this, but it won't be enough to kill him. Even if I crit, I don't think it would be enough to kill him. Let's try to stun. He resisted it. Too bad. Oh, good dodge, though, team. He took his bleed damage first. Dodging like a boss, you guys are just a bomb. Okay, so now, bleed me. Oh, nice crit. Dismas is the man. And as you can see, his bleed is now up to four. It's also been extended to five rounds. The reason it's five and not three is because we critted. Crit uh, damage over time moves don't increase the amount of damage per round just extends the number of rounds that it lasts so now it's up to five rounds and again this is even misleading the first bleed which did two for three rounds one round's already been burnt so there's technically two more damage coming for the next two rounds the bleed we just added was two damage per round for five rounds 
to lump them together, and it looks like he's going to take 20. He won't. He'll take four this turn, four next turn, and then two, two, and two, if that makes sense. Um, so don't think that it really reads four damage per round for five rounds. It's not accurate. Uh, but we're not even going to let it get that far. He gets his turn after I go. I won't do enough damage if I hit him with this attack, unless it crits, to kill him off with the bleed. So I really want to smack him. There you go. And while I didn't kill him, the bleed will. Alone does not dissuade the sharpened blade. Now he's pretty much screwed, Pooch. Well, that was a pretty good shot. It gave me some stress. He's basically done. There's very little he can do in the first position because he's a shooter. And now he's gone. A little stress relief. Okay. Now, we've just completed a quest. We want to go back to the hamlet. You click this, but there's treasure here, so we want to continue. Uh, notice a couple things here. We got some jade, which is money. Everything's basically in gold or heirlooms. Uh, what you see here is actually medicinal herbs, like this debuff that you see here. If I use that, that debuff will be gone. But I don't need to because we're done. Uh, we want to click the treasure chest here. But notice it says bandit's trap chest. Something doesn't look quite right about this one. If we click it, we're going to get a blight on us. Which we're going to do just to demonstrate it. How we resisted it. Good job. So, we're done here. We've got everything we can get. Time to leave. You click that. And it tallies all our money and loot our heirlooms. So we got 5,000 just for completing the mission, plus another 1,180 for all this stuff that we're bringing back, plus these extra heirlooms which we'll use to increase the hamlet. Everybody got a level. We started at level 0, now we're level 1. And some of them will get this. And in this particular case, this is a quirk that is negative. It's red, so you know it's negative. You can also get diseases. You can also see uh, positive quirks, and you'll see those in a minute. So, we're going back to the hamlet, which is eventually going to look like this, but right now it's all run down. Welcome home, such as it is. This squalid hamlet, these corrupted lands, they are yours now, and you are bound to them. Yay. So, you see that we have some buildings here that we're going to interact with, a couple, or a few that have lit up. So we're going to unlock them steadily. And it's actually kind of nice that they do that so they don't overwhelm you with everything all at once. Um, it is annoying when you restart a game, though, because you want to get certain things up, like the blacksmith over here. Increase your armor, your weapon attacks, all that good jazz. Uh, we have three things. Well, let's click on them and see what we got. We got a graveyard. Most will end up here, covered in the poisoned earth, awaiting merciful oblivion. He's cheery, isn't he, folks? He's available for parties out here. Uh, the graveyard will let you know if any of your characters have been killed. You want to go visit them and see you know, who's died. Maybe you can see that you're always losing your pistol shooters or something. You know, you want to go mourn the dead. You can go back there. In time, you will know the tragic extent of my failings. All these little video recordings, especially the movie clips like we just saw, The Old Road and The House of Ruin, you can re-watch in this particular tab. But look at some of the stuff that we are unlocking here eventually. Tons and tons of stuff in this game, guys. And they're adding another DLC, which I'm very looking forward to uh, using, buying, and playing. And I'll probably include that in my Let's Play as well. Hopefully I'll be high enough to use it. I don't know if it's a... You have to beat the game once to use it, or it'll be available right from the beginning. If it's available at the beginning, like from the tutorial on, I may just restart this thing and, and go from there. But here's our stagecoach. The only real useful building we're going to have right now is our stagecoach. Women and men, soldiers and outlaws, fools, fools and, and corpses. corpses. All will find their way to us now that the road is clear. When you start the game, you always get these two first, and then, uh, assuming they both survive, which I have died in the tutorial, I lost Dismas just the other day, so, you know, don't think that the tutorial is just going to give it to you. Um, but if you survive with both of these guys, you always seem to get these two guys for your next characters, so you get the Plague Doctor, she's pretty cool. What better laboratory than the blood-soaked battlefield? And that is a woman, she is quite cool. A sister of battle. 
pious and unrelenting. You betcha. That's a Vestal, and that's your healer, basically. One of the, the only real healer classes that you have. They, they, everyone can do damage and attack and do stuff, but by and large, her main goal is going to be to be your, your team healer. Uh, this character can heal poorly. This character will be able to heal poorly. There will be a, a, an occultist who can heal like a monster, but it's only single target healing. She can heal individuals, including herself, and she can team heal, which will be why she's loved. Uh, and there is another healer, I guess, kind of like the occultist, only it's more guaranteed, and that's the herbalist. She can heal. She can't heal everybody, but she can heal most of your team, individually, of course. But she would be one of the other default healers classes, as far as I'm concerned. Notice we have this icon here letting us know to open the tab. This is our stagecoach network. Notice the heirlooms it costs to upgrade to the next level. Right? These are our heirlooms listed down here. And you can, something they've added not too long ago was the ability to trade in heirlooms for heirlooms you do want. So that's very useful. But by upgrading these things, we get various features. So let's see. We have a stagecoach network. Notice how we had two heroes. There will always be two heroes that show up after each mission. Whether we're successful or lose, there will always be two here. If we upgrade it, we'll be three or four and on and on, you see. Better than that will be Heroes Barracks. We know we have four people in our uh, barracks right now of nine, maximum of nine. By clicking on this, we just increased it to 12 that can join us eventually. We'll get that even higher. I want to have one of every class type so that you guys can see what they all are, what they all do. Uh, we have other things down here like trinkets, which we haven't earned any yet, so nothing to worry about there. Uh, and you know, combat logs slash activity log what we've done our goals and again we have a lot of things to do in this game so don't be surprised if it takes a long time to finish it um, but we're going to embark a mecca of madness and morbidity your work begins eventually we'll unlock all these four areas uh, right now only it's available is the ruins really it's level one we could do the darkest dungeon level uh, one darkest dungeon there's four of them all together uh, but it's level six and they would crap themselves collectively so we'll do a low level one because that makes the most sense if you just left click on their portrait they fill in in position one two three and four respectively you'll see this name pops up and they'll be different depending on the, the party composition sometimes it means nothing it's just a cute little name that the devs decided to put in there and I thought that was kind of a nice little touch uh, again we want to make sure we have the right powers equipped you right click on their, their portrait and it pops up their character sheet. You notice good quirks versus bad quirks and this kleptomaniac one's going to really piss you off after a while. Uh, we can scroll through those characters. See their moves. You know, some are locked. We can unlock those later uh, and decide what kind of moves we want to have. These are camping skills which we'll get into that of course later too. lame heal that our plague doctor has but it's better than nothing they got a couple of my favorite moves the ability to poison things that's a blight move plague grenade that does two uh, two target blights in position three and four and they even have a bleed move which can be used from position three targeting position one and two or one or two excuse me um, so an overall useful character just not uh, very strong as far as health and dodge and all that good stuff. Notice we have some uh, dodge protection already because we have hard skin. That'd be a really nice one to keep on this character because that means she takes less damage. Protection is basically a decrease of incoming damage. It will, or dots will ignore protection. So when there's you or bad guys have protection, that's the, the way to kill those characters off by getting dots on them. Oh, she has one of her heals, her main single target heal. She's missing the team party heal, which is a shame. And these move maneuvers make her more suited for the front, which is a damn shame. Uh, because that means in the position that she's in, she can only do one thing, which is heal. So that's kind of a lame sauce thing, but whatever. Uh, I suppose I could switch her and him around. And then now she has the ability to do this move and this move, illumination. Yeah, that's something. And Plague Doctor's still doing some good stuff back here. I mean, we, we've lost Incision, but I don't care. Where we're going, they're not going to bleed very much anyway. It's mostly undead. The cost of preparedness 
measured now in gold, later in blood. Okay, well first off, you saw that we started with two free things. Uh, and that's because of the Plague Doctor and the uh, Vestal, that we get a Holy Water and a uh, Anti-Venom. Okay. And I think you always get two, depending on your, your team composition. Uh, so you should always see free stuff, which is always nice. Uh, we're taking some food because we need to make sure to keep our health up, and we don't need to starve to death. Sometimes you'll get a health check, or food check, which if you don't have enough food to feed everybody, which is one food per party member normally, then they'll take damage and they'll take stress and freak out. Uh, we'll take a shovel because sometimes stuff blocks our path. Take an extra antivenom just because. A couple of these holy waters because those are useful. A couple bandages in case we're bleeding. Uh, a couple herbs for debuffing. Uh, removing debuffs I should say. A few keys because there might be some lock stuff. And from there I just want to have at least a stack of torches. Let's grab 10 total. That should be enough for this. You don't want to over prepare because then you end up throwing stuff away. You can sell stuff back when you're done, but then you only get like five bucks for food instead of 75. So, you know, you lose a lot of money. And money right now is of concern. So, that should be enough to get us going. Which you check yourself to make sure you get at least food, shovels, and torches. Those would be the three things I'd say to take every time. Because you don't want to not be able to move boulders out of the way. You're always going to have to have this, and this can be used to heal yourself too outside of battle and the torches keep the light up other than that you really don't need the other ones you use them you might not need them you interact with curios with some so you get a feel for which ones you're gonna grab in the ruins in particular I remember uh, holy water and skeleton keys are particularly useful Here we are. We're in the orientation we want to be. Everybody has moves. Make sure you have your moves equipped. That would really suck. I've done that before. I've shut one off before. Running down the hallway, hoping for nothing. Got the curio. Got the torch. Some reward for a task well performed. Click left click that and you basically put it in your inventory. If you right click it, you use it immediately. Right click over the picture of it, I should say. Like that. Keeping our light up so we're gonna benefit from the, the light damage. Or the light damage. The the buffs that we get from having light. As the fiend falls, a faint hope blossoms. Now that move gave us light and killed that guy and left a corpse. The corpses are important because you can kill them, you can make them go away, they don't hurt you or anything like that, but they block access to things, prevent guys from moving forward. And again, like this guy here, he can only hit position 1 and 2. If there was 4 here and the corpse was in the way, these guys would be basically untouchable. Uh, so, but for the time being... He's almost dead. Let's just try a quick stun. And the reason I'm doing this is because it does more than enough damage to kill him. Between that and the blight that's already on him. And it's my most accurate attack. Oh yeah. So even without the stun he would have died. Like that. Slowly. Gently. This is how a life is taken. Alright. Unlock strong box so we don't need to drag a key to here because it's already unlocked. An extra shovel, some money, and some deeds. Those will be used to increase certain things in our uh, hamlet. And here's where a shovel comes in handy. Even the cold stone seems bent on preventing passage. If we don't use the shovel, if we just click this, uh, I think we take damage, but we definitely take stress, and the light goes down a lot because it takes longer to clear it. This is one of the only curios where it actually automatically puts the shovel in its place. So all you gotta do is, if you have a shovel and you want to use it, you can always back out. But if you want to go forward, just click it. We run forward. So up here. Okay. See that? Douse some of our torchlight with that move. 
Uh, you'll notice that these are new characters. We've never fought them before as far as they've never taken a swing at us because you don't see anything in their skills down below. She has one because she just used it. And it's a good stress move. We don't like that, so we want to really take her out. She's, she's bad. Oh, that's not good. And some damage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. Get her torchlight back up a little bit. Let's try to stun this cooper. I don't want him to get his turn. There you go. Oh, his turn will be wasted. And we're going to play grenade her. Some blight on her. That won't kill her this turn. But it will kill her next turn. Unless she heals herself or somebody removes that blight, which I don't think they can do. She's basically dead next turn. Because she only has 4 health. Before her next turn, the blight will take effect and she'll die. So we can ignore her now. So let's shoot the skeleton. I missed completely. Come on. The torch light back up. Oh, that hurt. I'm gonna start healing here. Uh, let's light this guy. Now you resisted it. That's not good. Oh, more damage. Alright. I really just need an attack. What's this grape shot? Oh, there you go. As the enemy crumbles. She needs to heal herself up. She's already taking a significant amount of damage. Uh, let's blight him. Hope for the best. There we go. Not enough to kill him this round, but he'll die next turn. Now, we could kill him. We could buff ourselves, heal ourselves, you know, do our best to try to get ourselves in a good position. The longer you stall out a fight, the more likely he is to call reinforcements and your people stress out. But I think at level or round three, we're probably still okay. This will buff me a little bit, and it'll also increase our torchlight for free. Might as well do it. It's just a small amount. And we're going to stall again because the blight will definitely kill him this turn. Basically, I'm giving my chance, myself a chance to heal up some of my team. Like so. And he's death. dead. Okay. Got some crests. Those are other heirlooms. In radiance, may we find victory. Okay. Now, I have taken damage. If I want to, I can eat a little bit of food. Heal everybody up. Uh, they can eat up to four before they become full, but I want to save some just in case we have a food check. Okay, nice scout for us to see what's in the hall and in the rooms at the end. So you see we have a curio and a room battle with a curio in it. We have a curio here and a room battle with a treasure in it. Let's go to the treasure. Not that curios are bad, we're going to go both ways. But okay, now he's going to steal from us one of these times. Because he's a klepto. Wealth beyond measure. Awarded to the brave and the foolhardy alike. And you'll know when he's stealing from you because he'll grab it without you clicking it. So they'll have these quirks that make them interact with things. It'll piss you off too because they'll touch stuff you don't want them to touch. We surprise them so again we will all get our turn first before any of them get a chance to swing. So let's try to take out the one that does the stress damage. The match is struck. A blazing star is born. Not bad. Play a grenade for the win. Oh, resisted it. Mm -mm -mm. Let's stun him. Okay. One guy taken out for the turn. These guys get their turn, so that's not too bad. Ooh, good miss. Okay, now everyone gets their turn like normal. Later. There you go. She has four damage coming to her. She has four health left. She's going to die. I don't need to focus on her at all. This guy and this guy are my priority. And while this guy can't bleed because he's a skeleton, this guy's a human. He can bleed just fine. So, open up a vein on him. It didn't work, but we debuffed his resistance. He's going to try the same basically on me, and I resisted it. Fair is fair, I guess. Unforeseen. Oh, that's some damage. 
Alright, you gotta heal. Be back into a good good place. Alright, let's do Zealous Accusation, which will target both of them. May kill this one. It probably won't kill him unless it crits. Continually on That's okay. Destroy you see the corpse all. behind is blocking our access to him sliding into position one. So we could target the corpse. But there's no point. We can just shoot this guy. And we found our first bracer, uh, trinket, dark bracer. Uh, you get extra crit if the torch is low and light. Extra dodge if the torch is low and light. If the torch is above 51, so above half, um, you get a damage decrease. So this would be one of those that you want to take with you on a dark run. We're not going to equip it because we want to keep that light up and stay safe. You see how this has a lock on it. That's a way for you to remember that the heirloom chest requires you to use the key to open it safely. And another trinket. But we can't use it because it's for the bounty hunter only. We don't have a bounty hunter yet. That wasn't bad a little haul. Those two trinkets alone are worth money. We could sell if we had to. Alright, uh, let's backtrack and go this way. Because we know it's down that hall. The hall that's already been lit up, as you can see here, will burn less light walking back through it. So that's helpful. Click there. So we'll find out what these curios are. Can I steal it? Here he goes. Stealing my loot. And I really wanted that, Jade. You thieving bastard. Alright. The way is lit. The light path up. is clear. We require only the strength to follow it. I activated a little buff for myself. That's the, one of the effects of a holy water. Will increase your blight, bleed, disease, and debuff resistance for a short period of time. I just put it on my main guy because it could be a very scary rune. It's not. I'm going to do some little spread out damage here. Take out these guys quick. He's particularly nasty. He's definitely dead. Because he got killed by a dot, there's no corpse. So that was helpful too. Because that means our crusader can now swing at this jackass. Uh, four to eight with a good crit chance. Oh baby. Nice little stress relief too when you do that. Whenever you crit... This expedition at least promises success. Whether it's a, a, a crit heal or a crit for damage. Whoever got the crit, whether like like say she healed him and critted while doing it, so he heals for even more, he would also get a little stress relief because he got critted. If he did crit damage like you saw, he gets a little stress relief. Sometimes that actually spreads to your teammates too, but by and large it's usually the person that gets the crit. Now you see we have a curio here in the room, a holy fountain. If we use a holy water on it, we get a buff or a heal or a stress relief, something like that. So I'm thinking it's a stress relief slash heal, so we want to take her stress down. Oh, it, we can just click it too, by the way, and it helps too, but it doesn't heal us as much, I think. There we go. And a nice little stress chunk on the way. Nice. Alright. What do we got? Oh, we didn't get a scout, so we're going to keep moving. Trap. And if you scouted, you would have seen the trap. Curious is the trap maker's art. His efficacy unwitnessed by his own eyes. If you actually see the trap on the map, like in the room by scouting ahead, you can click on it and sometimes you get lucky and disarm it. Disarming it, of course, means you don't get to take any damage, but you also get a little stress relief too. Alright. We got a scout. And there's our trap, see? So we did a complete scout, that's nice. Now we know we have to go all the way to the end here. We only have to explore 90% of the room, so after we get to this room, we'll be done. I can get this trap and get rid of some stress, but then we'll backpedal this way again, which means we'll probably get stress back on our team, so it's not really worth going left. So we're just going to go right. Ooh, lots of food. 
Because we have so much food now, I'm just gonna heal like I am. Yeah, and he can't go anymore because he's full. See, full, full. So I use four to heal him, and now he's stuck. Light up. There's our food check. Now he will heal. But you'll see that even though everybody's full health, one, two, three, four pieces of food will be you. We'll be down to ten. Yep. As the light gains purchase, spirits are lifted, and purpose is made clear. Now we could leave. There's nothing wrong with leaving. We could leave. But there's treasure here. And we're pretty healthy. We're doing pretty good. We already scouted the rooms and the hallways, and we know what's in the room. We have a barrier, and we just conveniently have one more shovel left, because we found one, thank God. Uh, this would have been one of those where we ran out of resources if we hadn't found one. So there's treasure in this room, which means probably a chest of some kind. Um, so if I wanted to, I could buff one of my guys up with this holy water. We'll wait till we get into a fight first, though. The light, the promise of safety. That's a pretty gnarly fight, but we got lucky. A nice surprise. He does a lot of damage. He's a pain in the ass. He has protection, which means he takes less damage unless it's a dot. Um, this guy is, is a stress dealer, though, so he's our, our probably our priority. And he's already dead. Nice. Uh, so at this point, we could target anybody. Might as well weaken, say, this guy. Lowers his dodge too. That's nice. I didn't know if he had any, but if he did, he ain't got it now. Cleansed from our lands. So, a very nice first round for us. Whatever they do at this point, we'll be able to probably survive it. Ooh, that's a pushback move. Oh, yep. And a stun. Oh, gnarly. So I've lost my turn for Dismas, but that's okay. Let's start blighting the guy that has protection. Nope. A hand of light. This is the Jesus smack. Uh, it does an accuracy and a damage debuff, it looks like. So let's use it on this guy. Boom. Less likely to hit us. Nice. Uh, so accuracy, obviously, goes against dodge. Uh, we've debuffed his accuracy, which is like saying we increased everybody's dodge, if you want to think of it that way. Well, let's do a little zealous accusation so we can spread the damage out. Now he's about ready to die. That's okay. He's, he's a tank. He can take it. She can't. But that was okay. Alright. I want him dead. There we go. Oh. Jesus, Matt. Yeah. And he's still good up here. You know, he can't do anything to this guy other than his open vein or his grape shot. Grape shot's gonna be lame. Open vein won't work as far as bleeding, but it still does okay damage. So we'll work on that getting his health down. There we go. Obliterated. Now we have one more turn. If we go ahead before him, we'll heal basically. On its own. Wow, look at all the trinkets, man. This is a trinket for an arbalist, the other type of healer that she basically shoots a crossbow. We don't have her yet, though. But we completed the quest before we're done. Let's, uh, again, heirloom with a lock on it. Use a key. Finding the stuff is only the first test. Now it must be carried home. Yeah. Which is where we're going now. So we get a decent amount of money, a good quest reward, some heirlooms, as well as this trinket, plus all the stuff that we've earned. So all in all a pretty good haul. Not as much money as I would have liked, but I'm not going to complain. We got trinkets that we can sell, so... Now you'll notice these guys are still level 1, but they got some XP, which is what this bar is indicating here. These two characters got to level 1 now, though, so that's nice for them. Uh, our Plague Doctor, she got uh, a quirk that's negative as well as a quirk that's positive. 
more damage when they're in the wield. Uh, crit decrease for range skills, which is a shame because that's mostly what she does. He got faded. Now that's a nice one, especially for Dismas. Basically, when you miss, I think it'll re-roll it and see if you hit again. So, chance to turn any miss into a hit. Back to the Hamlet, and we'll see what we got for people, and then we'll wrap up this episode. But that was a pretty good, successful first team mission. The plume and the pistol. A bidding end to my folly, and a curse upon us all. Uh, so we've unlocked the tavern and the abbey, which will show you those. Those are for stress relief. The cobwebs have been dusted, the pews set straight. The Abbey calls to the faithful. Our little caretaker, you learn to hate this son of a bitch because he'll hop himself into one of these rest areas every time, either here or in the, the bar. Uh, some of these characters, for example, like this one, has God fearing, will only pray for stress relief. That's the only way to reduce stress in town. He's staying in the only place where you can pray, so he's blocking my access to it. See, so I can't do anything with Renault for getting his stress down here. It, it slowly peels off just for them resting anyway, but if we had like a lot of stress, like this was really high, we could slap them in here, spend the money, and they'd be relatively stress-free when we came back from our next mission. Fresh kegs, cards, and curtained rooms promise solace to the weary and broken alike. And again, some of these guys may have quirks that a lot, yeah, see, he can't go to Gambling Hall, which means he's probably a known cheat. There it is. A quirk that basically prevents him from going there. As far as quirks go, that's not that bad. His God-fearing is worse, and you notice how it has the skull here? Those mean they're locked in. So remove these quirks in the town, which we can do that eventually, that'll cost us lots of money. Let's see what we got for free troops now. Nice. So we have two new troops that we can bring. You don't have to take them. You can just leave them there. Uh, and if you go on a mission and come back with these four guys again, two new guys will be here. Maybe the same kind of people, but there's no guarantee. They just they don't hang around after a week, basically. So if you want them, take them now. Since we want one of everybody, we're going to take both of them. This man understands that adversity and existence are one and the same. Cool. Here's another tank. He's pretty much completely useless unless he's in position one or two. Any move he has is position one or two. That's, that's not all he's there for. But he's a good tank and he does decent damage. His accuracy is just not as good as the Crusaders, for, let's say. Uh, the Hellion, she's a good front runner. She does good damage. She does some bleed damage. She can self-heal a little. She can do a variety of things, stuns. Um, bleed moves are her thing. Hitting the back row makes her extremely useful. So the Iron Swan in position 1 allows her to target this guy. So that's extremely potent attack. Uh, we got pretty much the moves I like for her. So it's, it's a pretty good character. This one sucks. But that's only if her health is low. We keep her health up and she's fine. Uh, these ones give her really good advantages in the Warrens. So we'd want to take her in the Warrens if we could. Barbaric rage and unrelenting savagery make for a powerful ally. I'm upgrading the stagecoach, so now we get three characters each time. Reason for that is, is more choice, and we have six more slots open. So, if we pick three next time and three the time after that, we're actually doing pretty good. We'll still be full. So, but with that, I'll say thank you for tuning in. My name is Brother Mutant. Hope you guys like this uh, let's play so far. Uh, Certainly there's other Let's Plays out there. By all means, look at other ones that are more advanced. There's, uh, uh, like I said, Bear Taffy's doing one where he's not only done his Let's Play of the first round through it, but he's, if you beat the game and you're allowed to go back in and do a plus version, which uh, has a little time limit to it, which I'll do as well, but I'm certainly nowhere near as far along as he is. Uh, and he does a fantastic job. So by all means, look at others as well. Uh, hopefully you guys like this. Please like, subscribe, comment down below. See uh, what kind of party compositions you guys like. Maybe I'll put one together next time. Just so you get an idea of what I'll probably pull. Uh, we're still in the war uh, ruins, so bleed damage is not particularly useful. But maybe we'll take out our uh, leper. 
as our tank this time, give Ronald a chance to get a little rest, and then just take our team like yay, or like, yeah, like that. That'll probably be our next team. But thanks for tuning in. Hope to see you guys soon.